Hi everybody, it's Tim with Engadget, and we wanted to give you a look at the new release, the latest release of Windows. This is the consumer preview version. It's not all that much different from the developer edition that we took a look at before, but there are some important changes here. We thought we'd use this op as an opportunity to give you a full walkthrough of uh, what the Windows experience looks like in Windows 8. As we're told, there are no more major changes coming to the operating system. Uh, meaning basically this is going to be what you're going to get when it ships sometime before the end of the year. This is, of course, the biggest change to the operating system, this Metro-style interface for the Start menu. This is what you get if you hit the Start button on the keyboard. No more pop-up uh, listing of menus, no more pop-up uh, selections of icons. This is it, this Metro-style interface, uh, definitely heavily uh, inspired by Windows Phone with all these things that you can pin to it. As you install an application, anything is added here as a pin, and uh, to get there you simply click on this. But if there's something that you don't want, you can right click on it. It'll bring up this little menu, unclick from start, and it goes away. If, however, there's something that you'd like to add, an application that has been installed, but isn't here, just uh, click on that, and this gives you the complete comprehensive list of applications that uh, you have at your fingertips. And any of these, you can right click on it and choose to pin it to the start menu or you can pin it to the taskbar in desktop mode as well. Another way to get to your applications is to go back to start, hit the Windows key and then just start typing. You see I typed PowerShell and that brought up the Windows PowerShell application as the first response. This is pretty similar to what you might be doing in uh, Windows 7 currently where if you just hit the start uh, button and start typing it will uh, start finding things for you. So pretty similar experience there. You can also click and drag any of these to move them around and uh, again it's very easy to personalize but if you get too many by going down to the lower right here you can get a 30,000 foot view of all of your pins and tiles and uh, that makes it a little easier to find things. Now we've got some hot corners here which you can use with the mouse as I'm using here. Currently we've got a USB mouse connected. Uh, also with the mouse wheel, by the way, you can go left or right. Now lower right, you already saw, I got that high level view. If I go to the upper right, it brings out these charms which give you a quick access to changing settings, uh, sharing things, uh, adding devices, that kind of thing. Always available just by going to the side of the screen. And as you can see, we've got the new Windows logo here as well. Click on Settings. These are some of the quick settings that you always have available, including brightness. Let's bring that up a little bit. You've also got notifications here, and you can go into the full list of settings here, which is a bit more comprehensive, although there is also the control panel available to you, which will give you even more things to tweak. If I go to the lower left, that causes the Start to pop up. So that's as if there were a Start button there, despite the fact that there is no Start button there. And in the upper left, this brings up the most recent application I was running. So in this case, it's the settings. Keep clicking and you'll kind of keep cycling through the different applications that you have running. And you can uh, very quickly get through from one to the other. That way you can also go into the upper left and then drag down. And this will give you uh, a listing of all the applications that are running as well. So let's go ahead uh, over to the desktop, for example. I'll show you that you can go to the left, drag down, and I'm going to grab... Internet Explorer, the Metro version, and pin it to the left. So now I've got IE, the Metro version of IE, sitting over on the left here, which is fully usable. You can click and drag this to the right if you want, so that this takes more than the desktop. However, you can't drop this anywhere you like to. If you drop it here in the middle, it's just going to pop to one side or the other. Basically, it's divided into roughly quarters with IE or some other Metro-friendly applications sitting on the left. Another thing that's kind of interesting, let me get rid of this, is that I have two versions of Internet Explorer running as you can see in the new task manager here. We have the Metro style IE here plus the desktop style IE here. These are two completely separate applications. They don't share cookies, they don't share bookmarks. You can get from one to the other by sending a URL from one to the other. So one of the things that feels a bit disjointed as you go from the desktop version of Windows to the Metro style version of Windows, it's just not quite feeling fully integrated. Another thing that's a bit weird, as you can see, there's no start button here. You can get to the start button by hitting the start key on the keyboard, there's a start button on the tablet which you can reach up and press as well uh, but with a mouse the easiest way is to go to the lower left and click now that's nice and quick but if you're a new user here you might be a bit 
confused looking at the screen, being completely unable to find the start button. Imagine yourself at a desktop that doesn't have this little start physical button down here. You'd have your keyboard, but there's no indication that you need to be down here to get to the start button. That's a bit odd. Let's take a look at the Maps application. This is, of course, using Bing Maps. And as you can see, it's a pretty standard, straightforward Maps interface. This was fairly quickly thrown together by the Microsoft team, so I think there are some things that uh, are going to be added in here, some more functionality, but you can quickly toggle between the road view and the aerial view. Uh, hopefully we'll also be getting the bird's eye view, which, uh, of course, Bing uh, is very good at, which is uh, pretty handy if you're trying to find something in particular. Now, this is a tablet, so I can reach up here and drag uh, around. We've also got weather. Let's go ahead and give that a tap. So here you can see, looks like 43 degrees in Trinidad, Colorado, which is, by the way, not where I actually am, but that's okay. We won't blame Windows for that. So again, this is the consumer preview of Windows 8, and again, we're told this is pretty much what it's going to look like when it is released to the public for real sometime by the end of the year. Uh, we like the Metro interface, but it just doesn't feel very well integrated with the desktop. It just feels like something that's added on. And uh, the, the two halves don't seem to get along very well, I think as best evidenced by the fact that you've got two versions of Internet Explorer here. That's just a bit odd. So again, the consumer preview of Windows 8 previewed for you on Engadget. <laughs>